One of the things that I admire about Sea of Stars is that it's a game that never wastes the player's time. There's almost no fat on the bone in terms of the main quest, and you're never doing anything that feels like an annoying chore. Let's see how that translates to the Platinum experience. Step 1 is to beat the main game. There are 21 story-related trophies, and don't worry, I'm not going to go into any story spoilers. Overall, the game lives up to expectations. It's a great RPG. I'll quickly touch on some of the highlights. Battles are short, but have several systems to keep them interesting. You can time your attacks for extra damage, you can learn enemy patterns to block some damage, and there's a lock system where attacking with the correct magic type can disrupt enemy attacks. I'll admit that I got a little tired of the battles by the end of the 40-hour game, but all things considered, I think that's pretty good. Speaking of timing your attacks for extra damage, one of the trophies that I was most nervous about was Bouncy. For this trophy, you need to use Valir's Moonerang spell. You can keep the spell going by deflecting the Moonerang at the correct time, and for this trophy, you need 25 bounces. I think you'll likely get this trophy naturally as you just keep playing the game, but it's definitely one to keep in the back of your mind. Specifically, keep an eye out for the battles where there's a lot of space between you and the enemy. The more space you have, the easier it will be to keep your combo going. So with that, we'll skip through all of the remaining story trophies. I thought the story was really strong, there were definitely some surprising beats towards the last third of the game, so if you're feeling a bit burnt out by the first third or the first half, I say keep going, definitely worth finishing this one out. After completing the main game, it's time to turn our attention to step number two of the Platinum, unlocking the true ending. After beating the main game, you'll see a cutscene of a shrine with seven ruins that you need to light up. Each of these ruins corresponds to a post-game quest that you need to complete. Some of these quests were actually my favorite part of the entire game. Dungeons and random battles took a back seat in favor of puzzle solving and exploration. In one quest, you have to explore the world to find and complete the five solstice shrines. Another quest has you listen to a story to learn how to find a secret boss hidden in the desert. Many of these quests end with a secret boss battle, and once you take out the boss, you're rewarded with the trophy and the ultimate item for one of your party members. The best piece of gear for that member. Overall, these secret quests were really rewarding, and I found them to be a great change of pace compared to the main game. That being said, one of the ruins that you need to activate is tied to the rainbow conches that you'll find throughout the game. This is where the Platinum Journey turns into a bit of a grind. There are 60 rainbow conches hidden throughout the world, and you'll need to find every one to get the true ending. I was actually a bit surprised about this. As a trophy hunter, I'm used to having to do a few hours of collectible hunting towards the end of the game, but usually this is just for a trophy. Having the true ending of the game blocked behind a collectible hunt is pretty brutal in my opinion. I think it really conflicts with this idea of removing friction in the game. Again, that idea of removing friction being you don't have to grind levels to beat bosses, you can switch party members as much as you want with no consequence, just kind of taking away the annoying parts of RPGs. I think this big collectathon at the end of the game really kind of stands in contrast to that idea. To give the developers some credit, there is a mechanism for identifying the areas in the game where you still need to find conches. After you turn in 27 of these, you'll get this relic that lets you talk to a parrot on your ship, and this parrot will tell you if you've cleared an area or not. It's not the most intuitive system, you need to keep talking to the parrot again and again to get more information out of it, but at least it's something. I always talk up Kenna Bridge of Spirits as one of my favorite Platinum experiences, and they do a better job in this case, where the UI for understanding what you still need to find is really, really solid. I wish Sea of Stars was a little bit better about that. Regardless, I was able to find all the conches, and here I am turning them in to get the trophy. While we're talking about these conches, there's also a trophy for picking up every treasure in the game. There are 187 chests in the game, and you need to track down every single one. This is pretty typical trophy hunting stuff, but again, it's a little surprising in a game that's so respectful of the player's time everywhere else. Alright, so we've almost lit up all seven of these ruins for the true ending, but before we do that, I want to touch on the one missable trophy in the game. For the well read to trophy, you'll need to listen to all of Teak's stories at the campfire. These stories are unlocked by turning an item into Teeks, the storyteller. The thing is, one of these items is missable. To get this particular item, you need to make sure to talk to Sarai at a particular point in the game. You need to talk to her after beating one of the endgame bosses, but before doing all of the steps to get the true ending. If you're nervous about this, just talk to Sarai after beating the main game, but before starting all of these endgame quests. Alright, with all of the ruins lit up, we can now get our trophy for the true ending. Again, I'll skip the details here to avoid spoilers, but I thought it was worth it. I really liked the true ending. I will say there is one more super secret easter egg for people that manage to do everything in the game. 
I won't spoil what it is, in fact the developers have asked folks not to do that, but if you're going for the Platinum, you're going to be really close to getting that anyways, and so you might as well check it out. I think it's pretty cool. So we're pretty close to the Platinum at this point, we only have a handful of miscellaneous trophies to pick up, and once again some of these were pretty grindy. For one trophy, you need to find and cook every recipe in the game at least once, and this time there's no nice UI like the Parrot to help you out. And then when you're actually making the recipes, again, there's no way of telling which ones you've made and which ones you haven't, so you kind of need to do this bookkeeping yourself. Kind of a pain in the butt. My favorite miscellaneous trophy was Clockwork Champion. For this trophy, you need to beat every champion in the game of Wheels. Wheels is an in-universe board game similar to Gwent from The Witcher or the absurd robot chess game from the Horizon series. I actually think Wheels was my favorite of these three in-universe games. The game is pretty simple to learn, there's not a huge tutorial that they make you walk through to learn all of the rules. You also have the ability to use a couple of different units, and your choice actually makes a difference here. You play the game a little bit differently depending on which units you're using. I'll also say that the game itself looks and feels pretty good. The wheels themselves have these nice mechanical feel to it, the units are cool, they level up in cool ways, so overall I was pretty impressed by wheels, so I like this trophy a lot. Alright, after all of these miscellaneous trophies, there's only one trophy left, and unfortunately, it's such a pain in the butt that I've broken it into its own section. So, section 4, what a technique. For this trophy, you need to beat 10 bosses with the Artful Gambit relic turned on. This relic is essentially a difficulty modifier, it removes 95% of your health, but if you're able to successfully time your blocks, you'll only take one damage. So it's a bit of a skill check of can you time blocks correctly every single time. The issue here is that you need to beat 10 bosses with it turned on, and you find it very late in the game, so there aren't that many bosses left. You find it during Sarai's endgame quest. And while you could turn this off for some of the late game bosses, those bosses are obviously the toughest enemies in the game, and so turning on this difficulty modifier trophy makes those bosses twice as hard. So what most people do is they finish the main game, they do the true ending, and then they start a new game plus file where they're able to turn this relic on from the very beginning. And in new game plus, you keep all of your items so you can one-shot most enemies and bosses, so the difficulty modifier doesn't really matter. But this kind of means that you have to speed run the start of the game. You have to get all the way through 10 bosses, which is surprisingly far into the game. It ends up being about 5 or 6 hours of mindlessly grinding, speeding through the game, skipping all dialogue, all that kind of stuff. Again, I'm pretty used to this as a trophy hunter. It's not super unusual to have a fairly boring, grindy trophy that you need to finish at the end of the game. But a brutal trophy like that does feel out of place in a game that seems so intentional about everything else. It seems like a bit of an oversight, honestly. I ended up saving myself a little bit of time. I fought three bosses in my original playthrough with the Relic on, I decided to risk it, and so that meant that I only needed to fight seven bosses in my New Game Plus playthrough. I'm glad I did this, I think it probably saved me two hours, maybe three hours of the New Game Plus playthrough, and honestly I wished I toughed it out with a few more bosses in my original playthrough. I think I probably could have gotten two or three more, which would have shaved off a couple of more hours from the New Game Plus playthrough. But, oh well, lesson learned, I sped through the New Game Plus playthrough, and here I am beating my 10th boss with the Relic turned on, getting me the Platinum trophy. Overall, I'd give the Platinum maybe a 7 out of 10. The game itself is great, but the grindy trophies at the end really soured my experience, which is a shame. Thanks for watching, and please give a subscribe and a like for more Platinum videos.